So guys, I've got a problem with my leopard gecko breeding and I'm gonna fix it with this. Welcome back to Northern Exotics guys, a reptile YouTube channel that absolutely loves to educate and have a load of fun along the way. If that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. So what's the problem I hear you ask? Well, it's to do with these eggs. Now, one of my leopard geckos is not laying the eggs. They're perfectly fertile, but she's not laying the eggs in the lay box and they're drying out before I've got a chance to get to them, which is not good. It means they're basically as good as worthless. Granted, if they're still half decent, I can try and save them. I can try and build the humidity up, but this is one that I saved. Dead as a dodo. So, I've got to figure out a way to get them both to lay in lay boxes. One of them's laying perfectly fine, and I think I know which one isn't laying in the lay box because Donna, my blazing blizzard, every single shed, I have to get the shed off the tips of her toes. So I have a feeling she's not using the lay box. And she has used it before last season, perfect. This season, not so much. So I've got to try and figure out a way to uh, get her to lay in a box, and I think I've figured it out. So this is their breeding facility. You can see the lay box over the back corner there. There's Donna as she is, just sat there perfectly. But they've got the three hides, and she keeps laying in this hide, or underneath that piece of cork there. So I've got to figure out a way to get either her to use the hide, or to put a bigger hide in. And that was my plan. I'm thinking if I put a bigger hide in, possibly one without the lid, she's used it millions of times before, so I don't know why she's stopped using it. I don't know. But if I make it easier for her, I give her more places to lay, maybe we'll start getting successful... Um, egg laying from her. So this is my plan guys. Remember my big giant flower beetle that hatched only a few days ago out of this tub? Well, why not use this tub and make a bigger hide or even better, make two hides. Um, whether it's a territorial issue for them, I am cohabitating the two leopard geckos and I am expecting them to use the same lay box. Sometimes that could be a problem as we've noticed now. So if I turn this into a lay box and leave the other lay box in there, Maybe that'll help. It's definitely worth a try and it's easy to sort out. So I've got the top. All I've got to do is stick a hole or two in the top, fill it full of cocoa fibre, drop it in and see what happens. But first, there's no longer a Macularino Ugandis flower beetle in there so I can take those labels off. And uh, let's start. So first things first, I've got to get a cocoa brick. I picked up this from Seas, the Southeast Arachnid Show for a quick. I picked up about 10 of them, because I'm always using them. Um, stick that in three litres of water. In half an hour, I'm going to have 10 litres of perfect cocoa fibre. So I've come into the kitchen to do this bit, simply because this is loud, and I don't want to spook any of the animals in any of the other rooms. The kitchen's the quietest place for them, but it's the noisiest place for me. So I'm going to cut the music out, cut the background noise out and stuff like that while I do this, so I don't burn your ears off. Hopefully, it all goes well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just start by making a tiny little hole. It's actually turning out to be quite a big hole. I've got a pair of scissors, just keep twisting it around. There you go, I've got a nice hole in there. Now that is solely for a purpose. Um, we're going to use it as a pilot hole to put the drill bit in, just like that. And then off we go. It keeps a good guide and um, just stops it from skipping around everywhere and hurting your fingers and stuff like that. It's just a general little bit of safety. But when you are doing this, make sure you watch your fingers underneath the actual tub. It does hurt when you get caught, just like I found out then, as you can tell. But, yep, yeah, just get it out now. Uh, uh, well, attempt to get it out. And then um, put the lid on the box with the cocoa fibre, and job should be a good one. So there we go, guys. Big asshole in there. Stick it on that. They can climb in it. More texture. Loads of room. Let's see if this works. A dead simple case of simply just put the cocoa fibre in. Now I like to leave minimum of an inch above the cocoa fibre but below the lid just so they've got a bit of manoeuvrability in there. Um, I never feed them in here so they don't have to worry about impaction. Put the lid on and there's their lay box complete. If you guys have the same problem and you guys decide to do this, when you've done this you've got a lot of burrs and stuff. So just grab a pair of scissors and just run it around the burrs and uh, get the burrs off so it's not sharp for your animal and your animal don't hurt itself. So I don't know how we're going to work this, but let's have a look anyway. Um, first case, I'll get... Oh, God. Hold on a second. Is there eggs in this? As you can see, shallow enough. Donna's in there. Um, let's look at this first. So, she's obviously using the hide because she's in there now. 
I'm not disturbing any egg laying, so come on, girl. In your heart, go on. She was a bit energetic. Let's have a look in here because this. I wasn't expecting any eggs, not for another week or so. And yeah, it doesn't look like there is any eggs. Just had to dig around, haven't they? Yep. But it shows that she does use the hide, which confuses me massively. Let's go back and see what we can do inside the enclosure. That still doesn't rule out the um, the territory issue. Have they got territories? Is it the territories that she's avoiding? All that sort of jargon, so to speak. I take the hide out, take that out, because I'm going to need a bit of space. I'm going to stick the new big hide with the big hole over that back corner. Just like that. And what I always do is, well, I was just sticking bits of cork back so they can get up there, but I'm going to have to do something a bit different, I'd imagine. Let's, what about, no, because I want to use that. I'll do that. Uh, I'll stick that at the back corner there so they can climb up there. Stick that one there. Whoa, she's throwing a proper threat pros. Check her out. Whoa. She's not happy at all. But I need to work, so uh, let's crack on. Um, I'll stick this other hide just down there so that she can use that to climb up and I'll even stick that just there so that it can climb up again and um, I'll probably find a few other bits and pieces I've got an old weighted plant thing there I can stick that there and actually do it like that so yeah that's what I'm doing with there shall I put the old hide back in I don't know if it'll fit to be honest um, what I'll do actually Get these out, and I can drop the old hide right next to it. No, I can't, it doesn't fit. But here it does, there we go. And then, if I put these bits here, they can use these to climb up on top of here to get into there. Ooh, there we go. That's what I'll do, just like that. So we've ended up with two lay boxes. Hopefully one of them will work, if not both of them. And more hides. There you go, they're both going out exploring their new um, hides. Got on proper kissing each other. Hopefully they go into it quite quickly and then um, just so they can have an explore. Let's see what happens. I've got a time lapse this I think. So they've both gone for a little explore. I have to keep an eye on one of them because she's gone behind the lay box. So uh, I don't want it to get trapped or anything so I might pull the lay box out a little bit. I'm not too sure yet but I've got some maintenance to do in here. Um, we've got a bit of cleaning up. Some, I've got to do the water, the food. If you want to see a feeding of not only these, but all my reptiles, hit the subscribe button because um, that's my next video anyway. So uh, let's crack on. Check that, she's managed to go all the way around the back of the hide and not get stuck, so uh, I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm going to leave those two to get settled into that new enclosure setup sort of thing now. Hopefully, I will never have to deal with the stuck shed on the toes anymore. And we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully, they both start laying and get more production on the eggs. You never know. Problem might be averted. We don't know until the next set of eggs come, which are due in about a week. But guess what else is also due in about a week? All the babies. Well, not all of them. Just two of them are due in about a week. Oh, I've got a bad egg there. Oh, I've got it. Can't wait for these to... Oh, I've got another bad egg there as well. Oh, well, the rest are all good. I'll sort them out in a minute. <laughs> juggling busted leopard gecko eggs thanks for tuning into that video guys if you've enjoyed it hit the thumbs up button if you're new around here please consider subscribing and while you're there hit that notification bell just so you get notified every time i do upload a video peace out guys so if you did enjoy that video and you want to see more you can either do it two ways you can either click subscribe which is a big red button down that corner or that corner and um, Right next to that, there's a little notification bell. You can press on that as well. Further, other than that, you can uh, click on this video here. This video will take you through to a Savannah Monitor Care video that I did. That's also worth a watch. And this video just down here 
That one is going to be a how to breed Dubia Roaches. If you fancy learning about that, just click on that and away you'll go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you all.